sing Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come rest on. You're all we want, you're all we want, you're all we want, you're all we sing Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, sing come rest on us, come rest on. I said, praise ye the Lord. The hour of signs and wonder has come. The Lord will touch you. I said, the Lord will touch you. You will not remain the same. In Psalm 84, verse 7, the Bible says, they go from strength to strength. You are going from strength to strength. From power to power, from peace to greater peace, to right, from righteousness to holiness. They go from strength to strength. Everyone, everyone will be touched in the name of Jesus. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. You have come to appear before God. And through our Father in the Lord, as we've been ministering to you, to all of us in the globe, strength to strength, power to power, in the name of Jesus. This night, I have this special privilege, uncovered privilege, to introduce uncovered 
defend our faith on a common day to uncommon global congregation that will receive uncommon signs and wonder. Join me to welcome our Father and the Lord to the podium, our Pastor Dr. W. F. Komui. You are welcome, Thank sir. you. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Tonight is a special night. And I see the signs already. The guest minister did not know that I'll be talking on the Holy Spirit. And yet he sang that the Holy Spirit will rest upon us. And that he, with his power, is all we want. Our minister here did not know I'll be talking on the Holy Spirit. And he opened John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. Again, Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is here tonight. It will turn your life around. You will go from strength to strength. From power to power, and from glory to glory, you will not miss it today. Special day, first of the month. Special day, the last day of the crusade. Everything tonight is special in your life. Father, we thank you and bless your name. You have seen us through this far. You've done a lot. And you're still going to do a lot in every life. We're asking, Lord, all mountains tonight in the lives of your people, roll away in Jesus' name. Here in this happy, happy Alpha location, Obama Show, happy people. And all over online, all over on the radio, all over on the television, everyone will have a touch, a transformation, a miracle, signs and wonders in every life in Jesus' name. It is done. It is finished. All your problems tonight finished. Sickness tonight finished. And every heartache finished tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you, you can sit down. Tonight, we're looking at Romans chapter 8, and I read from verse 9. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man... Have not the spirit of Christ is none of his. You will see there he mentions the flesh. The flesh is weak. The flesh eventually will die. The flesh does not have anything good, anything eternal, anything permanent for us. But in the spirit... In the spirit. And now he reveals, he declares, he describes that spirit. First of all, he said, if so be that the spirit of God, the spirit of God. Then he says now, 
if any man have not the spirit of Christ. First of all, spirit of God. And now second, spirit of Christ. I'm sure you understand, it's still the same spirit. Somebody comes out and he gives, he wants to give testimony. And he says, my names are Agnes Olurotimi Jacob. My names are one, two, three. The same person. And it's the same way that he is the spirit, one. He is the spirit of God, two. And he is the spirit of Christ. But the important thing is that he dwells in you. It's no more hovering over the waters in Genesis. It's no more here and there all over the universe. Yes, it's omnipresent. Yet, he dwells in you. When the Spirit of God comes and he dwells inside you, all the glories of heaven, the salvation of Christ, the goodness of God, the Spirit, Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, when it dwells inside you, goodness will dwell inside you. Grace will dwell inside you. Glory will dwell inside you. All blessings that you need will dwell inside you. Give me a good amen. When the Spirit dwells in you, all other tiny, tiny spirits, all other entities that refer to themselves as spirit, evil spirit, demon spirit, sickness spirit, spirit of infirmity, and spirit of evil. When the Holy Spirit comes in, all the other spirits will find their way out. And today, every other spirit that has been tormenting your life, harassing your life, the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ comes in. Disease will find its way out. Evil will find its way out. And all those dark powers tormenting your life, ruining your life, and they say they'll give you this uh, sickness and that disease and that evil and that bad luck. When the Spirit of God dwells in you, all the others, they will vacate their seat where they were. Amen. We're still talking about possibilities. And tonight, I'm talking on sustained possibilities by the Spirit of Christ. Sustained possibilities. All the possibilities we have got. Salvation will be sustained. Healing will be sustained. Deliverance will be sustained. The power, the boldness, the courage of God in your life will be sustained. The deliverance, the dominion will be sustained. Every good thing the Lord has done, every good thing the Lord has promised, every good thing that he promises us when the Spirit of Christ dwells in you. All those possibilities, all those good, good things as answers to prayer that we got from the first day, to the second day, to the third day, and to the fourth day, to the fifth day, and to this final day, everything will be sustained in your life in Jesus' name. Sustained possibilities by the Spirit of Christ. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the present work of the Spirit of Christ. The work that he had done, he started in the past, and he's doing it in the present. And every day in your life, he will continue to do that, the present work 
of the Spirit of Christ. Number two, the perceived works, in the plural now, of the Spirit of Christ. The perceived works of the Spirit of Christ. Number three, the profound wonders through the Spirit of Christ. Look at number one. Number one is the present work of the Spirit of Christ. When we say present, the same sun that shined yesterday shined today. The same sun that shined a decade ago shined today. The same sun that shined a century ago shined today. The same sun that shined at the time of Christ on earth, that same sun, there's no replacement, shined today. The same sun that shined at the time of Noah. It is no replacement. It's not a different sun. It's the same sun that keeps on shining to the present at the same spirit that moved at that time in the past. It's that same spirit that is moving today. The same spirit that came and came with the power of the almighty God a century ago, a millennium ago, and thousands of years ago, it is that same spirit that is at work today. Hey, let me show you something in First Peter chapter 1, and I'm reading there from verse 9. First Peter chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. In verse 10, in verse 10 it says, of which salvation, the salvation where today the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Look at verse 11. It says, searching, watch, or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them. The Spirit of Christ which was in them. The prophets of the past, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified of the beforehand and it says of the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. Uh, that, that, uh, that means then that same spirit in uh, Elijah that called the fire down is the spirit of Christ. At that time, I told you, the same sun shining today is the same sun that have been shining all the way through. The same spirit that was in those prophets of old and they did wonders and they prophesied of the salvation that will come is the same spirit of Christ. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us. They did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost. He calls him the Holy Ghost now, the same Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, the same third person of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. And it says, was the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire 
to look into the works of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit, and the glory that the Holy Spirit brings in our life is so marvelous and so wonderful that even the angels, they were searching and wanting to find out who are the people that will have the climax and the greatest of the work of the Spirit. Now, that work of the Spirit, let me show you what it did at that time, what he does at this time in the present work of the Spirit of Christ. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. And the Lord said, my spirit, the Lord said, the Lord, the God of heaven, my spirit, who is that? The spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord. It says, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years in the time of Noah the world was corrupt and the Holy Spirit was the one convicting men this is evil it, at that time the world was dirty defiled sinful they transgressed the law of God and as the Spirit of God that was striving with them Convicting them, reminding them, troubling their heart, telling them this is the way of evil. That the work of the Spirit of God. He strives with men. He pleads with men. He says, this action is evil. This language is evil. This behavior is evil. And this thing that you are doing transgresses the commandment of God. Anytime you do evil, anytime you go the wrong way, there's a spirit of God that is saying, why will you perish? This is bad. This is evil. That is his work. And that has been his work from the original time. And then it says, his day shall be an hundred and 20 years and eventually because they did not listen to the counsel of the spirit they did not listen to the conviction of the spirit that's why the flood came that's why the judgment came and today the same thing the spirit is warning us the Spirit is alerting us. The Spirit is policing us. The Spirit is saying, this is evil. At that time, that's how he warned them. And those who did not listen, they perished in the flood at the time of Noah. And that same Spirit now, is saying all the works of the flesh that somebody commits the wickedness all the works of the flesh the idol worship all the works of the flesh idolatry adultery fornication lying hypocrisy envy fighting violence the spirit of god will not leave us alone he wants us and he says repent come out of this so that judgment damnation will not come upon your life those people the majority of them did not repent they perished they suffered they are now on the other side of eternity and they have been tormented forever and ever he comes again tonight reminding us that he is that spirit of christ that wants us and tells us to repent of evil in nehemiah chapter 9 reading from verse 13. nehemiah chapter 9 verse 13 
How many years did thou forbear them and testify against them by thy spirit? In thy prophets. That spirit was in the prophets. When David won, when Nathan won David, it was the spirit of Christ in him saying, Thou art the man. And when Elijah came to Ahab and he said, You have sold yourself to doing evil, you have become mindless. Because evil has totally seized your mind. It was the spirit of Christ in him that warned Ahab. And when the angel, when the prophets came unto the people of Israel and said, You have transgressed, you have.